in the last few sessions, we have looked at the process of identifying market opportunities, the process of qualifying those market opportunities in terms of current position, future growth opportunity, competitive intensity and several other factors. We have then also looked at different uh, frameworks, matrices, how we can evaluate these opportunities, classify them and having chosen two or three opportunities, the process of targeting those opportunities, creating the value bundle, positioning them for winning those opportunities. We have also looked at the analysis of competitors, analysis of industry life cycle position, product life cycle position and taking all of that into consideration to decide upon the marketing mix and other components of the marketing strategy. We have also looked briefly at how customers, particularly consumers in the business to consumer market or B 2 C market as we call it, how they make their buying decision and therefore, how we can strategize to make it easy, to make it pleasant, convenient for the customer to acquire our products or services. In this session, I plan to take up a case study, present to you some scenarios, some history and some present perspective in a particular industry segment quite well known to you. It is an industry segment where you should be able to gather good market intelligence from your local market and lot of published material is available for your secondary market research. So, this is an industry you are quite familiar with, as I mentioned you should be able to get primary data from your own city, town, location as well as you should be able to get enough published material on the internet to do some secondary research for deeper understanding. And if you search through the websites of the business uh, magazines, you will be able to find lots of uh, reports on this. So, this is the paint industry in India. First of all, in this industry, we know 70 percent of the industry. So, first uh, set of data that we have tells us that 
this industry, the paint industry in India, 70 percent uh, is in the organized sector. And this is the sector that we will be looking at, because the unorganized 30 percent sector, we may not have enough information uh, to do our case analysis. In the year 2000, we are starting with a uh, historical background. In the year 2000, this industry, the organized sector uh, was divided in two parts, major areas, uh, decorative that is, uh, which is used for interior finish of uh, buildings, rooms, etcetera, that accounted for 70 percent and uh, 30 percent was industrial use, automotive special purpose uh, uh, industrial applications, anti-corrosion applications and uh, marine applications uh, another big area. Worldwide, this ratio actually is not 30, 70, but about 50, 50. And so, we expected uh, at that point of time that uh, the industrial growth will be faster. The industrial demand for uh, paints will grow faster and so, over the next 5, 10 years, uh, it was expected to reach the, the international level of 50-50. At that stage, in the year 2000, this was the competitive scenario. Asian paints was the dominant player with 33 percent market share. Remember, this is 33 percent of the 70 percent of the organized market. And then followed by Nerolac at 18 percent, Berger paints at that stage at 14 percent, ICI 11 percent and Jensen Nicholson at 6 percent. The total market was about 2300 to 2500 crores at that stage. So, Asian paints was at 700 crores in the year 2000. They had excellent distribution, they had been quite innovative in creating new markets. Many of you may be aware of the uh, interesting work they did by developing many rural applications, like for example, they created that famous Chota Dibba uh, for paint, uh, which was quite popular in the rural market for painting the horns of bullocks used for uh, plowing uh, or uh, cows on festive occasions. Just an, a small example of their uh, innovativeness. Uh, they had good management and in decorative paint, uh, decorative paint incidentally can again be subdivided in um, types like uh, high end acrylic emulsion paint, sometimes called uh, uh, plastic paint and then we had of course, uh, the enamel paint and the distemper range, which is the kind of low end. And as you can imagine that uh, the high end acrylic emulsion, the main market was in the metros for high grade residential projects and uh, the medium range, which is the so called uh, enamel paint the market was mainly in the tier 2 cities, but this is these are broad generalization. Obviously, 
in a tier 2 city like Kanpur, there will be or in Lucknow, there will be many people who will be quite uh, capable of affording the, the highest level, the most sophisticated paint uh, uh, available. So, but the generally distemper uh, was linked to uh, low end housing, middle class, lower middle class housing, the enamel was middle class and the, uh, the, the acrylic high finish paint was uh, targeted towards the affluent customers. The industrial segment, which accounted for 30 percent at that point of time, could again be subdivided almost 66, 65, 66 percent was for automotive and the balance uh, uh, 35 percent or so was in other applications like marine or special purpose industrial applications that we discussed. Now, something interesting happened in uh, 2000. If you dig through the uh, business magazines, you will find uh, interesting stories on this. That at that point of time, uh, ICI, which was a British company, a global player, very large company, 15 billion dollar at that stage, but their Indian business was small, 200 crores as opposed to the 700 crores of Asian paints. But they wanted to purchase uh, at that stage uh, Asian paints, ICI uh, made an effort and uh, because they, they, thr they decided that paint will be their thrust area and they wanted to grow 10 times. Uh, over the next uh, period of planning and they wanted to one of the steps they wanted to take was acquire Asian paints. It did not happen. Why it did not happen that is more with respect to uh, uh, financial valu valuation, mergers and acquisitions, strategies which companies uh, adopt to protect themselves against hostile takeover and all that. That is not exactly what uh, we will be looking at. We will be looking at that that was the market where we had a dominant position for Asian paints, uh, 33 percent market share. The market itself was about 700 crores for industrial and decorative for 1600 crore. So, this 2300 to 2500 crore market in the year 2000, we find that in 2010 the market has uh, reached from that scenario in 2000 an excellent position. The market was growing at the rate of 1000 to 2000 crores per year. For example, I can look at the net sales of uh, the different competitors in 2011. The Asian paints, the net sales was 6000 607 crores and they were projected to grow at the rate of 22 percent. So, as you can see here that we were looking at uh, one company growing at the rate of about 132, 135 crores per year and Asian paints was doing as market leader pretty well because against their 6,607, these are all uh, taken from their annual reports against their 6,607.2 crore um, sales, their net profit in the financial year 2000 was 773.55, more than 10 percent which is quite excellent in a uh, consumer focused industry. 
The other people were also doing quite well. Nirolac at two thousand two hundred sixty six point two crore of annual revenue was projecting to grow at the rate of fifteen percent cumulative annual average growth rate against their two thousand two hundred and sixty six crore revenue their net profit in 2011 was 186.52. Berger Paints was 2096, quite close to the quite close to Nerolac. So, you see the relevant uh, the, the market positions had changed because this was the market position where Berger was at 14 percent against uh, Nerolac's. Um, 18 percent. Over the 10 years period that we are looking at, Nerolac at that time had become Kansai Nerolac uh, with uh, and Berger has closed up the gap. So, uh, in 2011 against Nerolac's 2266, Berger was at 2096 with 184 crore of uh, net profit. Axo Noble, which actually had acquired some businesses here, was quite far behind 1087, but even then a very significant player with 121 crore of uh, net profit. Shalimar Paints, small player, 404. with uh, by revenue with 13 percent growth rate projection 11 crore of profit. So, as you see that if you add up I will repeat the FY 11 result which is even better than these results that you see on your screen for 2010. I just gathered this data this morning that at the end of financial uh, year 11, that means uh, as on 31st March 2011, about uh, we had Asian paints at 6,607 crore, projecting to grow at 22 percent, Kansai Nirolak at 2266.2 crore, 2266 crore planning to grow at 15 percent annual average growth rate. Berger paints close to Nerolac 2096.2 uh, at 16 percent projected growth rate. So, the top three players were projecting to grow at 15 percent to 22 percent. And so, the market was you can see overall the organized sector one can say that uh, was planning to grow at 15 to 17 percent per annum. There was a surge of demand from the housing sector and construction activity all over India. And as a result, in 2000, It was expected that 70 percent domestic or, or housing sector and 30 percent industrial sector, that demand pattern will change to 50-50 pattern prevalent in other parts of the world. But 10 years later, the housing sector or the uh, decorative segment as we also call it was still quite dominant almost at the same level of uh, 70 percent. So, the market potential for that 70 percent segment uh, was very good because of the boom in the Indian housing sector and also because of the heavy infrastructure painting. The infrastructure painting uh, attracts both the industrial type of paints as well as the decorative type of paints. Uh, so, if you look at bridges and uh, 
uh, flyovers and uh, construction of metro uh, and, and such activities, you will see that there are both uh, types of demand coming from there. Uh, there will be industrial type of paints needed for the structures, for the exposed uh, metal uh, uh, structures and there will be decorative paints needed for internal of say of a metro station and so on and so forth. But the net situation was the decorative paint market was still dominant 70 percent, 30 percent industrial. Okay? Some forecast from the industry uh, is that the increasing manufacturing activities was going to again the projection that there will be a high level of uh, growth in the industry sector. And there were few interesting observations uh, from the decorative sector that there were more aspirational buyers that means people trying to improve their home environment more and more. So, there was a faster rise in demand for um, repainting sector that means people replacing their lower end distemper or enamel paints with the acrylic paints, uh, the washable paints and uh, so called plastic emulsion paints and so on. And similarly, it was seen that uh, there was a, uh, this market was getting upgraded, there was a slower growth in the distemper uh, or the low end paint market. And another interesting thing the industry uh, innovated was the focus on exterior uh, paints of buildings, because previously uh, most Indian buildings uh, paid not too much attention to the exterior paints. Uh, it usually was just some paint mixed with uh, the cement structure and decorative paint outside the building was not a major segment. But when we are looking at 2011, 2012 situation that has changed. That can be easily perceived from the uh, market promotion of the different players. If you look at the TV ads, if you look at the ads in print media, if you look at even uh, ads popping up on your internet during your internet surfing, they will mainly relate to internal high end decorative painting, where painting a wall is often being compared with uh, even creating an artwork. It is being highly related to lifestyle, uh, to mood setting, uh, to making your home uh, a more desirable environment for even making a romantic proposal uh, compared to the traditional settings. So, home improvement, aspirational sector is being addressed quite heavily in the current promotional campaigns of the paint industry. In the same way, the exterior paint is another uh, very uh, a, a segment getting a lot of attention uh, from the industry players. Now, if you therefore, take these activities that the rise in income and its impact, 
when to do this case analysis or build your scenario analysis, you should relate to the frameworks and the tools that we have discussed in the earlier sessions, how to look at uh, changing trajectory of consumer preference, how to understand the uh, consumer's uh, income, disposable income related buying behavior and so on, uh, the lifestyle, lifestyle impact on buying behavior and you should use those frameworks to build your own projection in this scenario. So, market characteristics remain focused on those two major classifications, decorative and industrial. We are summarizing here all the different usages. Four major players as I read out to you, Asian paints, Kanzai, Nirolac, Berger paints and Axo Noble still control uh, the most of the market. And uh, paint, the demand for paint as you have seen is relatively inelastic, that means the economy is going up and down. The economy had quite a shock during the financial year of 2008-2009, but the growth rate of the paint industry was quite healthy. As we saw that what was the size of the industry in 10 years back has now become the annual growth rate almost. But of course, it still is. Uh, related to the industrial growth rate, uh, the growth rate of the housing industry, the real estate industry, um, the spending power, disposable income in the hands of uh, customers for discretionary expenditure. But relatively, the paint industry is inelastic to seasonal or periodic variation. The industry has done well with respect to some of the marketing mix elements like uh, distribution, the place, even packaging there has been lot of interesting innovation. There was a problem earlier of forecasting that which kind of paint, what shade Earlier there used to be uh, your uh, house painter or your architect will come with a shade card, but today sufficient technological innovation makes it possible that a large variety of shades can be created at the dealer's outlet. They have been provided with the wherewithal to mix and match different basic colors to create a unique combination that you would like. So, the, the variations, the variants available on the shade card have multiplied manifold. That again has catered very well to the repainting growth segment of this industry. So, these are the growth opportunities on which you should base your marketing plan. Now, you can approach this exercise in two ways. A, you can assume that you are the marketing manager, the marketing strategist for Shalimar Paints, which is the smallest player based on financial year 2011, that means their revenue was 404 crores and their nearest rival Axo Noble had almost two and a half times of that which was 
1087 crore and the market leader had 6607 crores. So, Shalimar paints a small niche player. What should be, how would you develop the strategic marketing plan for Shalimar paints? The other way you can approach this exercise is you can assume that you are a global player, strong in European or American market and you are planning to come into the Indian market. There is an entrenched strong competition, we read out. Asian paint, a very strong local competition, Axo Noble or Tanzai Nerolac, global players. You have the growth opportunities in front of you, the market is still 70 percent in decorative and uh, 30 percent in industrial. And another significant factor that in front of you is that this market is far from saturated because uh, we had this interesting statistics here that per capita consumption of paint in India is only 800 to 900 grams, less than a kilogram. Compared to the developed world where per capita consumption is about 15 to 25 kilogram. So, if you consider that in India we have uh, say about uh, let us take say 1 billion or maybe half a billion prospective customers. Use the chain ratio method that we discussed in the previous discussion to understand that what is therefore, the growth opportunity. Today the per capita consumption is 1 kg, even if we are taking only half of the less than half of the Indian population even taking this half billion people and instead of 15 to 25 kg of global consumption level, even if we say we are just looking at 5, 1 kg to 5 kg or just to make it a little easier, so it is supposed to say 6 kg. or I think no, that I think the 5 will be a better one uh, option to. So, today's consumption is at the level of 1 kg, the it can grow to 5 kg per capita. So, therefore, 4 kg per capita is the growth opportunity multiplied by half a billion you are looking at 4 into, so 2 billion kg of paints is a growth opportunity. It will not happen over one year, but even if we take 5 years, this is huge, huge opportunity for growth. So, the market growth opportunity is there. You have the data with respect to the different players. You have the data with respect to the market composition and in one segment like the industry segment, we even have some finer usage data. 
based on this, you have to develop a plan. As I said, you can develop that plan on behalf of Shalimar Paints or you can develop that plan as a new entrant into this market. Growth opportunities are there. You can also use some of the other concepts like Porter's five forces analysis. The where we had supplier power, buyer power, substitution, threat of substitution, and new entry barrier or new entry. So, here you can see one can say the supplier power is medium because the main ingredients for paint like pigments or different petrochemical uh, products are quite there are a number of suppliers uh, in the local market. So, one can say that the supplier power is medium low to medium. The threat of new entry is again somewhat medium. There are many companies around the world who are interested because of this fantastic growth opportunity and the uh, very impressive performance over the last 10 years uh, of this industry. The availability of substitution that means, something that will replace paint uh, material where paint will no longer be needed that is kind of is still uh, almost uh, science fiction rather than science fact at this stage. So, I would say the threat of substitution will be low. In some segment, it could become a medium because some of the industrial usages materials are coming up which are they need uh, not that much of painting because uh, the various uh, base paints and multiple coatings those needs are getting uh, eliminated because of the material improvement. So, the substitution threat will be say low, lower medium and so on, but of course, one power is of the five forces one force which is the buyer power that is highly enhanced at this stage, because there are at least five, four, five major players. All of them are regularly innovating, coming up with solutions with paint, exterior paints which promise to keep the inside cool paint that enhances the energy efficiency of the building, paint that is washable and therefore, more durable, paint that can be mixed and uh, can create infinite numbers of shades. All of these innovations are happening. So, the competitive intensity fuels the buyer's interest and the buyer has many options. So, the buyer power is high, the supplier power is low to medium, the threat of substitution is low, the threat of new entry into the Indian market is about medium and the buyer power is very high. This is the five forces. Uh, scenario. So, we presented certain facts, figures about the Indian paint industry and now it is your task to 
develop a marketing strategy either for Shalimar paints which is the smallest player in the market. If you remember having only about 400 crores uh, sale in 2011 against the market leader Asian paints revenue of about 6600 crores. Or you could also develop a marketing strategy for a new entrant. Using some of the concepts and frames tools that we have already discussed, we can first develop on behalf of either Shalimar paints or this new company, a global company or a third alternative is as we have discussed before that 70 percent of the paint industry is in the organized sector or maybe 65 percent, but there are 30, 35 percent market share still with uh, unorganized companies. Now, these are companies which are capable of high growth. If you look at the history of even companies like Asian paints or Neurolac, they also started small. Maybe they started small 50 years back. Today in 2012, there is strong entrenched competition, but that does not mean that a new entrant cannot challenge if it has some significant technical advantage or if it develops some compelling proposition for a niche area. So, either whether it is for Shalimar paints or it is for a new multinational entrant or for a challenger from the unorganized sector establishing a key position in the uh, organized sector. In any one of these scenarios, some of these will be quite useful. First to understand, it is always good to put it on visual. If this is the Indian paint industry, we have already said 70 percent is decorative. This is the a B to C business to consumer, a market which depends highly on retail distribution and with different kinds of price and promotion. So, this is where all the uh, piece of marketing will be fully at play. Now, this decorative market from the previous description you know can be divided in three major uh, chunks. One is the high end sort of premium decorative paint, mid market the enamel paint and the low end which is the distemper. Another way of looking at the segmentation is that metro usually associated with luxury that means, this premium brand, but there is in metro also middle class housing, tier 2, tier 3 cities housing which will be primarily which has been primarily the market for the enamel and the semi urban and rural market which has been primarily the market for the distemper. 
but as we discussed a little while back there are exceptions this is just a broad generalization we discussed a key driver of this industry the aspirational aspect and therefore, there will be a market for in the tier 2, tier 3 city for the premium variants. In case of the industrial, as you see here, mainly it is divided in the automotive sector and the consumer durable and the marine market. Automotive sector accounts for nearly 75 percent of the industrial uh, demand and about 25 percent comes from consumer durables and marine and other specialized applications. On this kind of diagram, you can also superimpose some of these sort of issues like for example, the distemper market 10 years back used to be about 40 percent of the 70 percent, but it has now come down to about 20 percent. These are some understanding of the market trends which will be important for you to decide on your entry strategy or your growth strategy. Also, we can look at the, the decorative market, we can look at these different types mainly acrylic emulsion, varnish and enamel, distemper, weather protection. These are some very niche areas like non-toxic or these weather protection, but as you see from the recent promotion that is going on that these are being highly promoted now in the media by almost all the players, the key players like Asian paints or uh, Neurolac or Dulux, because as these markets sort of saturate or differentiation becomes difficult, only price becomes the determinant, then these are some niche areas where one can develop. So, for a new entrant, these are some interesting um, options. In the industrial as you see, there is powder coating, surface coating, but then there also there are special niche types like the thermoprotect or thermal protection, thermally sensitive paint or rust protection or non combustible paint and so on. If you take all of these you can develop number of matrices like this, like you can put say decorative 1, decorative 2, decorative 3, decorative 1, decorative 2, decorative 3 and industrial 1 automotive sector and industrial 2 the other industrial usages like marine or consumer durable. And then you can try to do a your competitor analysis, you can put Asian paints here, Kanzai Neurolac here, Berger here or you can extend it further. If you want to look at and from this you can develop your the position, we were discussing that Asian paints, we can use these types of symbols for an easy at a glance picture of the competitive scenario. 
So, this is how we can and then of course, as we have discussed you should look at uh, geography wise, application wise competitive position. This is actually by the broad classification of the products. A similar one can be developed for application, the similar one can be developed for geography, because these will lead us to the gaps that a new entrant or a challenger can address. Some of the interesting inputs that have come in and these are some other ways of looking at it. For example, what are the growth drivers of the paint industry in India. So, I often mention this social or economic aspects that drive market growth and should be considered as an interesting uh, or significant input in strategy. So, for example, it is observed by the market research agencies that educated consumers are now quite brand conscious for buying paint and therefore, paint companies offering value added features like non toxicity, weather protection, texture, eco friendly production will attract more demand. And these are value added products which can actually help you to get a better premium. And if you observe the television ads for paint industry coming from almost all the key players, you will see this particular factor at play. Similarly, uh, another interesting observation is that as urbanization expands, the number of nuclear families expand more nuclear families means more nuclear homes and very often these homes of young homemakers are small, but they are interested in making such homes stylish, elegant and the demand for high end paints go up because of these drivers of nuclear families, uh, both partners, uh, working couples and so on. The growth of the automotive industry drives the growth of the industrial paints, the increasing market dynamics of the consumer durables drive those other types of industrial paints. So, these are all, so it is expected of course, we have been expecting this for almost last 10 years that in the developed world industrial versus decorative is about 50 50. In India it is 70 30. So, there is possibly a higher rate of growth expected out of the industrial if our GDP growth picks up faster, goes back to some of the level that we had in 2006, 7 and we are seeing some good signs from the 2011 results. So, if you look at a good way to also develop your marketing strategy is to look at the reports from the stock market analysts because they are also interested in the growth of such companies who are not yet the market leader. Because as it happens when you start from a lower base, so if the strategy is right, then that market challenger will be a better investment option 
and that is why if you are developing the marketing strategy for one of these challengers, then it is good to uh, look at what the analysts are saying, where do they find opportunities, identify opportunities for growth from the analysis of the uh, competitive movements. So, I think uh, you have now enough inputs for developing your marketing plan, developing a the qualitative side of the strategy as well as some quantitative targets that you will build into your strategic plan. So, we will be expecting to hear from you and do not forget to complement your secondary research or gathering of secondary data from the internet with some field exploration go out into your local market and observe what is happening in the paint uh, distribution retail outlets. Talk to some architects, talk to some builders, talk to your friends and associates and find out what do they think about what kind of paint options they are going in for all these need to be put in for your final strategy document. Thank you.